This is the Millennium Hotel in central London, and it's here that police believe the former Russian spy, Alexander Litvinenko, was given a fatal dose of radioactive polonium. Who did it? Well, my guest today is convinced that responsibility lies with Russian President Vladimir Putin. But why should we believe an exiled Russian oligarch who's made it his life's mission to destroy the Russian president? Boris Berezovsky, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. I want to begin with something you said just a few weeks ago. You said, I have a target to destroy Vladimir's, Vladimir Putin's image in the West. That sounds like a personal vendetta that you have with Putin. On the one side, it's correct. On the other side, it's completely wrong, uh, because uh, Putin is a president of Russia president who came as a successor of Yeltsin. And maybe you remember that Yeltsin started democratic reform in Russia. It means that Putin became traitor because he stopped the reforms in Russia. He is trying to move Russia back to, to communism, to socialism, I don't know how to call it to get today. Uh, but definitely it's not vendetta, it's and particularly not personal vendetta. But it, so it sounds very personal. It sounds like you are driven by personal animosity. And uh, it's, uh, if you return back to 2000, for example, when I left Russia, and I wrote open letter addressed to President Putin, and I mentioned all points where I disagree with his policy. Moreover, he was my friend. I met him the first time at the beginning of the 90s, and uh, 10 years uh, uh, we cooperate a lot, and I thought that he uh, will continue uh, democratic reforms which Yeltsin start, and it's happened completely different. And uh, I understand on the other hand, well, uh, because, because I am friend of him, I was friend of him, uh, it's good accept as a personal vendetta, but it's not so. Well, I want to talk about your friendship with Putin, uh, as you say, going back many years in a moment, but let's Let's actually focus on the murder of Alexander Litvinenko first. Because you have claimed that in your mind there is no doubt that Vladimir Putin ordered that murder. But do you have a single shred of hard evidence to back up that claim? I have several, not just one. Uh, the first one definitely is Alexander Litvinenko's statement which he presented me personally when the first time I met him in hospital and he told me, Boris, believe it, believe me, that it's organized by state and Putin personally involvement. But with respect, that, that's not evidence, is it? Uh, just a moment. That's it's evidence position. because many times what Litvinenko present before happened as a realistic, as a fact, yes? And it means that he was professional, I mean Litvinenko was professional in his investigation. It means that being already in hospital and feeling that he is dying, he present a really very strong message to me that worries, be sure that Putin is behind of that. But it's, again, if you like to accept that as a emotional, it's up to you. But uh, there, are, uh, there are clear evidence that at least stayed behind of that, yes, polonium. Polonium 210 impossible to produce without state involvement. Impossible to transport to the other country without state involvement. Impossible to organize this plot without state involvement. And it's, the, it's a clear evidence for me, yes? The second evidence is not maybe direct, is indirect how Russia tried to protect people who are involved in this murder, in this plot. How Russia stop, is trying to, uh, to stop Scotland Yard in investigation in Russia. How they try to protect people who are involved in that Lugavoy, for example. And I tell you, I have also long experience in this country as far as my con communication with the uh, judge, with the, with the court system, with legal system in general. And I tell you, 
I hundred percent sure that Scotland Yard made very professional job. The man, therefore, who has gained most from the death of Alexander Litvinenko is you, Boris Berezovsky, because this has become the most wonderful instrument for you to portray Putin as a murderer. Look, it's uh, very well known speculation about that. And you just confirm that there is another public opinion which you present as a very, very public uh, uh, program, yes? And uh, I, I think, well, I think, I, I, I think, I, I, given I, given what you have said about your views on Vladimir Putin and how you want to destroy him, it is incumbent upon you to respond to the claim made by Mr. Lugovoy and others that there may well be a connection between you and the death of Mr. Litvinenko. He worked for you, of course. He was closely connected to you. Indeed, Mr. Lugovoy has worked for you in the past and been associated with you. You are inextricably connected to the death of Mr. Litvinenko. Tell me please, the format of this program is you just put a question or I am also allowed to put a question to you. Well, I, <laughs> the idea is that I ask the questions, you provide yeah, the but, answers. But, but nevertheless, uh, you know the conclusion of Scotland Yard. You know the conclusion of uh, Crown Prosecutor Office, which completely against of your speculation completely against that I am involved in this plot and the conclusion of Scotland Yard and conclusion of, uh, uh, of Crown Prosecutor Office is that Russia involved in that and moreover they named the person who really poisoned Alexander Litvinenko, it's Mr. Lugovoy. Moreover, I tell you one very important... I should add, because I'm sure the lawyers would want me to add, that all they want to do is question Mr. Lugovoy. They have named him as a man they would like to question. No, they no, have no, not no, said no, no, he, no, 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 no. he you are, is you are, the man who committed the no, crime. You are completely wrong. Maybe you didn't read the final statement of uh, Crown Prosecutor Office. They accused Lugovoy as a killer. It's completely different. As you know, we have a principle no, no, no. in this country. You are innocent until proven guilty. No. It Nobody is, at this it, it point is, is saying Mr. Lugovoy is the killer. There are, there are people in this country who would like to interview Mr. Lugovoy. It means if Lugovoy believe in your principles, he should take a plane, come to this country and go to the court if he believe what you believe. It means that your understanding of justice of this country is completely different what Lugovoy understand. And that means that you are not able to present that what you said before as a proof what you said because Lugavoy re refused to come to this country moreover uh, maybe uh, uh, 20 days after Alexander was uh, Alexander died Alexander Litvinenko died Lugavoy called me exactly at this room I, I have that time and he uh, asked me Boris do you believe that I am a killer and I said it's very complicated for me to believe in that because you are, you are my friend and Alexander was my friend. And I said, but uh, uh, there are some evidence that you are a killer. And uh, there are two at least. The first one is objective. The trace of polonium follow you all over the Europe, even cross my office exactly at this place. Look where we were sitting and you don't see now the chairs, but believe me, there was the chairs which were uh, traced a lot because uh, the level of Polonia was 800 times more than the place where Litvinenko was sitting. And the second I said, if you believe that, if you're sure that you are not guilty, take a plane, come here, I take the best lawyers of this country and you are able to prove that you are not guilty. No chance to put you in jail if you are not guilty. And he disagreed with that. It means that you are fighting now against of official presentation of this country that Scotland Yard conclusion that uh, Crown Prosecutor Office conclusion that Lugavoy is accused to be killer. I take no side in this particular dispute between you and the former associate, Mr. Lugavoy, but I come back to motivations and I come back to another quote that you gave to the Guardian newspaper on the 13th of April. After you had discussed your desire to destroy the reputation of Mr. Putin, you said, quote, 
We need to use force to change this regime. It isn't possible through democratic means. There can be no change in Russia without force, pressure. You, you still, correct. You still you believe that? Absolutely, 100% believe in that, except of, as you mentioned, democratic, yes? Uh, because I never mentioned that. In but, that that's the quote in the newspaper. I don't know if you're no, telling it, me you were misquoted. No, it, it could be quoted, but it's all the time some misunderstanding. I told that we really should, should use the force. And I, to confirm what I mean, I mentioned Ukraine, I mentioned Georgia, like it happened, but when really force was used to change the regime. Yeah? Because I think it's big hypocrisy to think that authoritarian system could be changed without force. It just seems to me there is a contradiction here. You talk about the need to remove Putin. One of the ways you say it is possible is by a move within the Kremlin, some sort of coup d'etat. And yet you are supposed to be a man committed to democracy. You don't actually seem like a man who is too concerned about democracy. Uh, the question, I'm sorry to say, what do you think is democracy? Well, I look at your that, that, career, that, 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 I look at your I, I, career, I, I, and I don't sorry, really I'm, I'm see... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As, as you told well, you me asked me a question, so I'm going to, I'm just going to, if I may, return the comment. You asked me about democracy. What I will say about democracy is that I see very little connection in your professional career between your activities and any real commitment to democracy. I don't see it in the 1990s when you became one of the richest men in Russia, one of the leaders of the oligarchs. I don't see it in your relationship with Boris Yeltsin. I don't see it in the way that you decided to mentor Vladimir Putin. You chose Vladimir Putin. You saw him as the right successor to Yeltsin. In all of these activities, I don't see any real commitment to democracy. Okay. We discuss in terms of speculation or in terms about uh, as far as facts is concerned. And if we return back to the facts, and what you mentioned before about my connection to Yeltsin and so, to 96. Maybe you remember elections of 96 and who Yeltsin was opposite to in election? He was opposite to communists, to Zyuganov. And I support Yeltsin, and Yeltsin was elected, and Yeltsin continued democratic reforms. It's Yeltsin completely. also uh, continued to allow you to take over the Russian economy. You told Forbes magazine in 1996, I and half a dozen other Russians control 50% of the Russian economy. You were involved in everything from Aeroflot to Sibnef to selling Russian cars. You were exploiting Yeltsin's complete sell-off of the Russian economy. And that was nothing to do with democracy. Do you, do, do, it's completely wrong. Do you know the law that it doesn't matter how property is diversified? The importance is that it should be diversified. It means that instead of only one owner, like happened in Soviet time, in communist time, when state owned all the property, we already become just seven who own 50%, but the rest 50 owned by the millions. It means that it's much better than it happened before. I don't want to tell you that it was excellent, but it was much better than it was before. But, but Mr. Berezovsky, what an extraordinary thing to say, that it doesn't really matter how it happens as long as property is taken out of state hands and given to individuals. It matters a great deal how it happens. The public wants accountability, it wants transparency. It doesn't want people like you to be given sweetheart deals, given, for example, the Seb Sibneft Energy Company for roughly $100 million when every expert said it was worth one billion US dollars. Is that what the public wants? It's completely wrong, because the price is market sense. And when I came to Mr. Soros, do you know this name? Mr. George, George Soros. Who destroyed a little bit the economy of this country, yes? And to the other in Europe and to Japan, and asking them, because I didn't have 100 million that time, I had just 50 million, and asked them help. I had them credit and so on. They said, Boris, are you crazy? 
Because next day, next month, communists will take power, and they take back everything what you are buying. It means that the price in market economy means value and risk. And I personally took this risk, and I won. It means that the next day, after president, after elections, when Yeltsin was elected president of Russia, I got a lot of proposal to sell it, as you mentioned correctly, for billion, but it was already a different time, and I disagree with that. I refused that proposal because I knew well that it's already not one billion, it's 10 billion. It's, again, the law of market economy. And it's what interesting. I, that. I understand what you're saying, but it's interesting that George Soros, whom you quote, has since called you because for a time you were friendly and you were associated in your belief that you could campaign together for civil liberties and freedoms in Russia. George Soros eventually fell out with you and he now describes you, I saw the quote recently, as an evil genius who destroyed Russia. So George yes, I, Soros I, I, has I, I, no I, faith in your commitment to democracy. I just agree with the one word, uh, genius, but disagree with evil. And uh, definitely, uh, George Soros did not, um, did not uh, recognize what happened in Russia. I also may tell you that he's a very clever man. And more, one day he, uh, he invited me to join he, to, him, to, his, uh, to his charity in Russia and uh, accept that. And I support Russian science as far as I spent 25 years as, as a mathematician, yes? But I tell you, he didn't understand what happened in Russia, and it's the reason why he lost money in Russia, finally, yes? Uh, because, uh, because the problem is that we really pass through the very, very complicated time in Russia, and uh, we were not able to follow immediately the laws of the West, yes? But step by step, we learn a lot. And I tell you, what happened today in Russia, in Putin's time, even when Putin tried to move Russia back, it's just the result of Yeltsin revolution. Because the revolution means not new economic mechanism, new uh, political mechanism. Econo revolution means mentality changes. And millions of Russia accept the position that to be independent, to be self-sufficient, not to depend to the state, not to depend to the president, not to depend to the Tsar, is much better than to be dependent. Let's talk about what Russians also believe. If one believes opinion polls, the vast majority of Russians still approve of the job Vladimir Putin is doing. His approval rating stands something close to 80%. In the last elections, he garnered around 70% of the vote. If you are as committed to democracy as you say you are, you have to acknowledge that Vladimir Putin has the support of the Russian people. First of all, I agree with you uh, that, uh, that the pool are correct. Are correct. And I uh, believe that 70, 80% of Russians believe that Putin is correct president. And yet you still believe you have the right to overthrow him? No, I am absolutely uh, sure that uh, he is moving Russia back. No, but, but, but I'm interested that you believe you have the right to overthrow a man whom you've acknowledged to me has the support of at least 70% of his people. No, 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 I, 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 I'm absolutely sincere with you. And I really believe that 70% support him and absolutely uh, sure that we need to change the regime and we need to, to uh, fire Putin. I, accept, I explain you why. Because as you remember in Soviet Union, 90% support, support Communist Party. 90, not 70, not 80, 90, maybe 99, yes? And you remember the Soviet Union collapse. Mr. Berezovsky, why do you think it is that the opposition, the democratic opposition movement in Russia is running away from you as fast as it possibly can. We had Gary Kasparov on our program not long ago, who is one of the leaders of the other Russia movement. I put it to him, as you have said, that he's receiving money from your different foundations and trusts. He said categorically not. He has no link, connection whatsoever with you. Why do you think he wants to put so much distance between the democratic movement and because the he, Because he's weak. Because three... Is he lying? Oh. Is he lying? Yes, definitely. He's lying? Absolutely. So you are funding the other Russia, are you? May I tell you? May I give you an answer? Yes? Good. Uh, three years ago, he came to this country, to London, and asked me to give him money for his 
political movement, yes? And I, I spoke uh, a lot with him, and I recognized that he is not tough enough to become a leader of that. And that's the only reason why I refused that. And now, I'm sure you will have opportunity to put him direct question. Uh, is it true that he traveled to London asking for money and I refused that? Final question for you. You asked me rhetorically, why does not Mr. Lugavoy come to face justice in Britain and we can settle once and for all who killed Alexander Litvinenko? The Russian state wants you to go to Russia to face justice on a series of charges of fraud and embezzlement. Why don't you go back to your homeland, make the case before the court and before public opinion that you represent the real democratic future for Russia and accept that challenge to win the argument inside Russia? Again, you are against of what this country, uh, this court, recognize as far as Russia is concerned. And I got political asylum in this country by two reasons. First of all, because all charges against of me as a criminal, you said fraud and so and so, money laundering, were accepted by this court of this country as a wrong, completely wrong. Moreover, I would like to tell you that even in Russia, two years after, this, the court in this country recognized that I didn't do anything criminal in Russia, even highest arbitrage court in Russia, except my position. This is the point number one. The second point, uh, it's absolutely clear uh, that I don't have any chance to have fair court in Russia. And moreover, according again of decision of London court, that I will, if I would return back to Russia, I could be killed or touched. And so it means that the second reason why I was granted political asylum, because of human rights. It means that it's completely different to, to compare me with Lugavoy case. Are you sure that if Lugavoy will come here, he will be take, touch or, or, or killed? Are you sure? Boris Berezovsky, thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure. And...